Sports. Now, the Senate on Tuesday confirmed Loretta Onochi and 12 other nominees as chairperson and board members of the Niger Delta Development Commission. Our ICE correspondent Georgina Ndukwezanika has the details. Brushing aside opposition from different quarters against the nomination of special assistant to the president on new media, Loretta Onoche, as chairperson of the Niger Delta Development Commission, the Senate has finally confirmed her and 12 others. This followed the presentation of a report by the vice chairman of the Senate Committee on NDDC, Amos Bulus, during plenary. During the screening exercise, the committee observed that two of the presidential nominees were absent and there was no information from the special assistant to Mr. President on National Assembly matters, explaining their absence. The two presidential nominees that were absent and therefore not screened are one, Dr. Pais Ekperemwen Odudu, nominee to represent Edo State on the governing board of the Niger Delta Development Commission. Two, Engineer Anthony Akane, nominee to represent Imo State. Before the other nominees were approved, some senators objected to Noche's confirmation, saying she is not from an oil producing community. We should add a clause in our resolution calling on not only this president, but all future presidents who will have to implement the act to comply in their nominations with the requirements of indigenship. Because what the law says is that the nominees should come from oil producing areas. Whatever will form a bottleneck to the inauguration of the commission, I think we should leave it. Because the truth argument about host community and oil producing community have not been properly defined. This report will have been very beautiful if the chairman has referred to our position in Ondo State that three senators declined to support someone. This is a report of the committee because you have signatures so don't particularize it that the chairman did this or didn't do that. The Senate then went into the Committee of the Whole to confirm and approve their nomination. The nomination of Loretta Ifanyi on a chair from Delta State representing South-South is hereby confirmed as chairman in the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Dingba? Well, for the new board members, the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has this advice. And for those that will take over the mantle of leadership, please, let's maybe digress a bit. Let's le really see NDDC as a development uh, institute rather than a cash cow. People should, should, should ensure that communities that this institution is supposed to work for really benefit from its existence and the resources. Lawan also requested that copies of the forensic audit report of the NDDC be made available to the National Assembly. Georgina Ndukwezaika, Arise News. Now against the groundswell of opposition to first the nomination of Ms. Onoche to chair the NDDC board by President Muhammadu Buhari and now her confirmation by the Senate we're being joined for a quick discussion by Professor Benjamin Okaba, who is president of the Ethnic Nationality Group, the Ijo National Congress. Professor, thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, of course, you, you know there's a lot of division regarding this. Some uh, numerous elements that have been brought up is the fact that she's not an indigen, of which, of which that's subject to interpretation. There also, there's also the argument uh, regarding the fact that, this is, that the process was not in adherence to the provisions of the NDDC Act. Numerous um, issues here. I'd just like to know your stance on this matter. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, in the first place, I, I just want to say that uh, we in John Nation and the entire Niger Delta uh, received the news of the confirmation with mixed feelings and reactions. Uh, mixed feelings because uh, in the first place, uh, we felt that uh, before the 
confirmation, uh, those uh, genuine protests concerning indigenship uh, that are clearly defined. Uh, indigenship is not an homophobous word. It's, these are is clearly defined in the Act and uh, in all known dictionaries. Uh, those issues should have been taken care of because uh, uh, government must be seen to be responsible by acting on existing extant laws. Uh, there are issues that should be subjected to, to uh, what I would call uh, 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 discretion. This should be discretionary so that standards, standards should be set. If the law says that the chairman or the board must emanate from a place where oil is produced, so should it be. Uh, and because we know that uh, there are so many persons from that area that are qualified to take up that position. And the other case from Mundo State is also very sad. So ignoring those protests and going ahead to, to confirm uh, the list submitted to Senate uh, is uh, to a large extent to say that uh, we have a government that is not actually listening. We have a government that has a different view uh, uh, from the views of the people it tends, it, it tends to represent. I say mixed feelings because uh, on the other hand, uh, people say half bread is better than none. Uh, remember several years we have the John Nation and the Niger Delta have decried uh, very seriously uh, the, uh, the situation where we have uh, uh, a, a sole administrator uh, managing and mismanaging the affairs of the, of the, of the Niger Delta uh, Development Commission. Uh, and uh, the fallout of all of that is that uh, uh, we, so much money has been spent, but very little uh, to show by way of, uh, of projects, of interventions, and other, other uh, physical development issues that were the reasons for which uh, the NDDC, uh, before it, the OMPADEC, were actually set up. So uh, moving forward, I think uh, the, the advice given to the, the new management by the chairman of Senate uh, for, uh, is, uh, is uh, very, is, I think is, is, uh, is apt. Uh, yes, a board has come to play, and uh, they must start by kicking the ground running. Uh, the challenges are enormous. Uh, they have backlog of uh, abandoned projects. We have cases of contractors that have finished their jobs several years ago and are yet to be paid. Uh, there are a lot of things to be corrected, a lot of things to be implemented. Uh, so uh, we also want to urge the president to see to the immediate swearing in of, of these persons. Uh, we've gone through this process, the first stage of submission of names, they have been cleared, and uh, there shouldn't be any delay at all in the, in the inauguration, formal inauguration of the board, so that they can officially uh, resume, uh, resume responsibilities and uh, take charge of the development of the region as contained in the, uh, in the documents that have authorized them to do so. Then the other advice that look, there should be a departure from what we used to know. Uh, the NDDC has become a cash cow, has become a weapon uh, used by politicians uh, to enrich their pocket rather than advancing the development of the region. It's a common knowledge, uh, you know, uh, we are all, Nigerians have not forgotten the off the microphone, off the microphone uh, incidents in Senate, uh, which clearly depicted a lot, a lot, a lot, even among the political class, uh, uh, the, a lot of very, very dissatisfying moments, uh, uh, very, very unpleasant uh, uh, indicators of non-performance of the NDDC uh, were, uh, were brought to the fore. So, uh, moving forward, I, I just believe like uh, the Sirake uh, Dixon, the representative for, for, from Bias, I did mention, now look, let it sound as a note of warning to this current president and 
presidents to come, that please let us at every point in time uh, put aside sentiments and emotions and deal with this institution as a public institution guided by public rules. And if the rule says the, 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 the member, membership should come from a particular place, so be it. Nobody should be above the laws of the country. Thank you. Okay, now uh, thank you for that. Uh, Ms. Loretta Onoche is not the first, uh, will not be the first chairman of NDDC who does not originate from an oil producing community. Uh, Onyema Ugochuku also did not originate from an indigenous and oil producing community. Do you think that it's time for us to relook at the act and the requirements that it places uh, of? Um, of, chair, of the chairman position. Is it possibly time, you know, you've just listed a number of the things on the agenda of NDDC that need to be accomplished. Is it time for us to look beyond uh, the states of origin, communities of origin, and start focusing on competence and other qualities that can move the NDDC forward? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, this is not a yes or no answer. Uh, uh, it's not required, actually, because uh, uh, in the first place, uh, if you say uh, it is time for us to look at the, do a review of the existing uh, rules, I think that is okay because uh, society is dynamic, so also uh, these rules and policies should be subjected to, to regular review uh, to accommodate uh, better options and all that. Uh, yes, if you say competence, competence is found everywhere. Uh, in the oil producing community, you also have Competence, people that are competent, sorry. You have a lot of competent people. And then the reason for saying, look, let the chairman come from somewhere, a place that is oil producing, has serious implications. One is that the person should, is somebody who is ordinarily committed, naturally committed to that part of the state, of, of the state, because in the first place, it has in, been impacted upon by the, the negativities of oil production and understands, and should understand, or assume to understand, the, the, the quick action, action processes and, and projects that will go into, into addressing those negativities. It's like asking a stranger element to come and oversee a board that is meant to address the peculiarities of a people. So the question of, uh, of uh, indigenship for me as justification. But among the indigenous, they should look for people that are competent. So it's, it, like I said earlier, subject to review, but at the same time, in as much as we can have indigen, uh, uh, competent people from the indigenous communities, we should be given that opportunity to do so. And uh, if you look at other agencies in this country, yes, it is only in the NDDC that you have all kinds of things. Uh, there are other agencies in this nation that uh, I don't want to mention at this point in time. So please, the advice is that, yes, if there are other areas to be reviewed, no problem. And they also mentioned that there was Sunday or Greek issue and all that. Uh, two wrongs don't make a right. If even there were three, the fact is that the three cases are wrong and they will remain wrong and they shouldn't be a reference point at all. We have extant rules and regulations uh, on these issues and until those issues, uh, those, uh, the, 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 the rules are reviewed and changes are made, I think we should be guided by what exists and what prevails at this time. But thank you, Professor. Are you concerned about what message this sends to Nigerians where the the, um, the laid down principles or laws were basically relegated to the background and you know things went along like they did and to the point that even we have groups who you know have who actually are thrilled with how things have played out like the voice of Niger Delta for equity and justice they vowed to occupy the Niger Delta if Loretta Onochi is replaced so on one hand, we have those who are disgruntled, and rightly so, because <laughs> <laughs> rules were not abided by. And then we have this other group who are saying, let's keep things as they are, or we're going to cause disruption. How do you see things playing out 
in the midst of all this? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, in this country, a lot of things can happen. You, you, you are familiar with the political terrain. Uh, the poverty level and the, uh, that has, has affected the conscience of people so badly that uh, you can go anywhere and recruit any, all kinds of people and to say protest for and against. In fact, depending on the amount of money you pay in any way, uh, the same person that are protested for in the morning can protest against in the afternoon. Uh, it's a country where we have seen fake bishops, fake, fake lawyers, fake everything. So raising a fake pro uh, uh, protester is not an issue. Uh, if you go seriously into all of that, you see that uh, those persons we say it must be are, uh, should be persons that were just brought in from one day. The question is that, uh, like I told you, we as uh, leaders of the Niger Delta, uh, uh, we have said well, um, they said they were, uh, we have gotten to a point. Uh, uh, they say uh, half bread is better than nothing. Uh, so, and uh, we are very, also very, very law abiding. Uh, the government of Nigeria has made a statement. Uh, the Senate of this country has also made their confirmation. So, as a joint nation, uh, we shall uh, appeal to everybody to remain calm and make do with what we have. With us, believing that uh, 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 if we're spoken to uh, and if they are properly guided, uh, I'm sure the needed dividends will, will accrue to us. So uh, we will not disrespect the decisions of government. Uh, yes, we are still Nigerians and the president is still our president. So the Senate is our, is our Senate. So uh, we call for calm from those who are still protesting against ownership. But the point is that our appointment is wrong and she should also be so noted that she's not from the oil producing area community and she's just forced on us. Uh, moving forward, at some point in time, we see uh, our bread is better than believing that when, when subsequent government come on board, uh, and again, uh, people are saying so because uh, we are just approaching 20, 2023 uh, elections that are pro pregnant with so many possibilities. So why kill ourselves when anything can still happen anytime, anywhere? So these are some of the issues uh, uh, people are looking at. And they say, that, look, look, let us allow them to stay and give them, give, just support them, pray for them. And, uh, and they are also aware that they are there in spite of serious opposition. And they might also turn out to wanting to, to do the otherwise, to say, look, you protested against us wrongly by performing very well. You know, you know in human societies, anything can happen. And uh, I think that, that, is, that is just the spirit. It's the spirit of give and take. Yes, the president has said so, the senator has said so. So let's allow them. There's no point protesting here. Either. So we're going to take care of, of this other aspect. Thank you. Now, uh, as the Ijo National uh, Congress, I know you've already listed a number of things that uh, you feel should be uh, in the housekeeping, so to speak, for the NDDC. But I'm curious to know that as you throw your support behind this new board, what are the most pressing issues that you would like to see the NDDC address uh, regarding your own interests? What are the, let's say, the top three most urgent things on your agenda? Uh, yes, the first is... Uh is to is the issue of sustainability of our peace and development processes. Uh, the NDDC was created for a particular purpose. And one of such is to address the issues of environmental pollution and degradation. In fact, uh, uh, the recent 2022 flood has exposed us, entire country, to, to the fragility to the need for urgent, urgent attention to be taken to address the needs of infrastructure. You saw how the roads, all the roads in the region, they all caved in to the point that the east-west road on both sides, uh, the delta and the protracted axis, were, were collapsed totally. So we need a refocusing on road infrastructure. Road infrastructure, then secondly, on addressing the questions of, of flooding, flooding that has be, is becoming perennial now. 
And uh, in 2012, we cried. And uh, what we saw in 2022 was heavier. So uh, fossil walls uh, for uh, several, several flood preventive measures need to be urgently taken. We don't need to wait until the floods will always come. It's an annual thing. So we don't need to wait. So for me, addressing those, those general concerns, uh, because if our communities are kept safe, and if uh, they are accessible, and if there are provisions for linkages between communities, states within the region and all that, and, and a neighboring environment is also created, people can strive, people can strive and uh, be working on these basic infrastructure. Superstructures can be built upon uh, in terms of uh, improving social services like uh, education, uh, like uh, air services, etc., etc. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Well, some uh, even doubts if the there are some schools of thought that actually say the NDDC hasn't made any profound impacts. In addition to the suggestions that you've made of what you would like to see, um, of course, you one of the things that were outlined by a guest that we had on one of our programs was that he would also like to see an adherence to the provisions of the NDC, NDDC Act. And in, in addition to that, he also mentioned, like you hinted, he said that it's been used as an instrument of politics in terms of when he was talking about the, the NDDC. And he, he also mentioned, he also said this, that um, when it comes to assignments of projects, we hardly ever see completion. How confident are you looking at this board that has come into um, that, is, that we should, will be sworn in eventually if things go the way you anticipate. How confident are you that, they, that based on how they were appointed, that they will actually ensure that the, your concerns and those that I've also outlined are addressed? Okay. Well, um, I will only speculate. <laughs> yes, because... Uh, uh, I don't know the persons, the, the characters uh, in depth, so I won't be able to say oh, categorically. But the expectation is that, yes, Avon been shadowed with this kind of responsibility. I missed, like I said earlier, I missed uh, a, a, a proliferator of, a, of a protest. One should be able to wake up and say, look, let us do the work. The, the, the very best. And one other thing I also want to say that, you know, for people who, who call for review and review and review, the NDDC is composite in terms of having what it takes to even fight uh, corruption amongst itself. So it's a human element, right? Yes, NDDC law has provision, they are, they, are, they, are, they are procurement acts of the NDC. There are so many other things that you regulate and make people make people do exactly what you should do at the right time. The NDDC master plan is a wonderful document that so much money was spent, a lot of persons were consulted, and the document is just there. So it's just the, having the right people with the willpower, with some level of independence. Again, because one thing is, not, is just, one thing is about the people. But just like you said, most of these persons are prompted by other people. Most of these persons are, 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 are shadows of other persons. Yes, so yes. at the end of the day, you might find, for instance, yes, you might find, for instance, the chairman might have a very good intention, but she's been nominated. She's, okay. she's been nominated by a father, by a political father. Yes. Who has a different agenda. Who she also All must right. not offend, because if she does... Eh? Hello? Yes, but if she does, there is also the possibility of being thrown out. So a lot of factors. We are not just so, going to so talk many to dynamics the are, are absolutely chairman and member. Yes, that, yes. So, that's yes. correct. We, yes. Thank so you many so dynamics. much for so these valuable the persons, insights. Yeah, uh, Professor Benjamin Okaba, who is the president of the Ijo National Congress, thank you so much for your contribution to this conversation. Uh,